We're back at the Montreal Comedy Festival. It's Alex Belfield talking to the big stars and new stars as well. And Daniel Rigby's one of them. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are it's you? It's nice to talk to you. And I've seen you on the internet and I've heard you talked about. And then you get invited to a comedy festival like Montreal, which is huge, yeah. which must mean you're a big star. Um, well, I, I don't uh, think it quite means that quite yet. Um, no. Um, oh, God, awkward. Um, but no, it's it's just a, it's a privilege, a great honour to be asked to to come here and do something like this, um, especially if you're a little fish in a very big pond, as I definitely am. So yeah, it's uh, it's an honour and absolutely terrifying at the same time. Again, okay, there's a lot of people who've been doing it a long while. I mean, you've yeah. just swapped chairs with Jeannie Yasheray, who's got incredible confidence. Yeah. Can you fake that even at your age and level where you can come on stage? Because really, nobody wants to see somebody learning, do they? Uh, no, that's right. I think it's absolutely... Um, you, you have to um, grab it by the horns um, definitely every time you get on stage so even if you are inside sort of incredibly nervous and want to run away and get on a plane back to England you have to look like you belong there and uh, you're going to make people laugh yeah because nobody wants to see somebody um, nervy yeah. I've been looking at you on YouTube and it's an interesting act how would you describe it for those who haven't seen you um, well it's kind of um, it's surreal observations and um, set pieces so little um, ideas and philosophies taken to down different avenues and um, with little bits of improvisation in the middle of it yeah when was the first time you realized that you might have a funny bone or show business might be for you um, I've been a compulsive show-off from the age of about <laughs> 10 years old. Um, so I think uh, from, from being very young, I've always wanted to be showing off. And um, this is the perfect environment in which to do that. Who were the people who you looked at and you thought, I wish I could be like them? Um, my uh, holy triumvirate of um, comedians was Eddie Izzard, Chris Morris and Peter Cook. Um, Eddie Izzard for the stand-up and Chris Morris for his... Um, for the work that he produces and his uncompromising attitude and Peter Cook just for his invention you know. and how do you go from being the guy who's funny in his bedroom and funny at the pub with his mates to then being invited to a festival like this because it's a big leap isn't it yeah it is I suppose it's just about I, it took me ages to grow the courage to get up and do stand-up um, it, it, it is a leap but it's just about having whether whether the compulsion is strong enough whether the drive is strong enough to make the leap from because it is um, it is difficult there are times when people are just going to stare at you blankly and that's what you have to go through to to um get better at it so it's um it, it is a big leap from being drunk in the pub with your mates and doing impressions of your friends to, to standing and doing some material about what you think about the government um, <laughs> um, but it's just about whether the drive is strong enough i think is there any lonelier feeling than being in a club and doing your great punchline that you've spent so long crafting and getting nothing there is no there is no worse feeling in the world, and I've been mugged. <laughs> there is, there is nothing. You've been mugged. I've been mugged. Yeah, I've been mugged more than once, and I would prefer that on any night of the week than than standing in front. But I mean, it's it is and it is worth it. Um, but uh, yeah, there is, it's an awful, a truly horrific feeling just standing there and knowing that um, it's going to be a long set. <laughs> what do you do in those moments? Do you have a Bob Monkhouse gag from 1992 as a zinger? That you can come back with to recover at least something for the show no i don't really uh, I, I don't have a bob monkhouse zinger unfortunately i should cultivate one probably but uh, i think um uh i just kind of try and roll with it as it as it as it happens and you know, sometimes it pays off to kind of mention it to the audience um only once i think um but um and and sometimes it doesn't sometimes you just have to try and dig yourself out of the hole and sometimes it's just not not gonna work and that's fine as well do you ever consider going that way the chubby brown route the bobby slayton route no i don't um no i don't at all because that's not my that's not my taste and i don't think that's in the i mean for me it's not my my, my personally what i um prize in comedy it's uh but there is definitely a market for people who do that kind of shock humor but for me uh, for me i just like doing it for for the giggles really just for uh, it's um fun and it's about being interesting about your viewpoint not about not about trying to right get a rise out of people um necessarily i'm too much of a coward as well i couldn't sleep at night thinking of the people i've offended who could come and beat me up on the street oh no it's awful it's awful i've got too much of a conscience for, for, for this <laughs> this business because last year in edinburgh i did a gig and a woman got up we were doing it in a very very hot venue and a woman got up during my set and it's it, i started talking about her to the audience because it was a small venue it was very obvious that she was getting up 
and I berated her for the duration that she got to the end of her line and then she just keeled over and fell flat on her face on the floor because she was trying to get out of it for the heat and she fainted and um, it was needless to say it was very very awkward and I had a little guilt baby growing inside me for many many nights afterwards keeping me awake yeah too much of a conscience congratulations on being you we're going to hear a lot more about you give your website so people can find out about you uh, at the moment it's um, myspace.com slash drigby you can't afford DanielRigby.com. I can't afford DanielRigby.com yet. Daniel, congratulations on being you. Good luck at the festival and enjoy your room service and all that. Is it glamorous being here? Yes, yes, it is very glamorous. It's much nicer than my house here because <laughs> uh, nobody brings me sandwiches to my room in my house, unfortunately, no matter how much I scream. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thanks.